and let's start with Mondi. So remember, as Wayne intimated, this one wasn't listed on its own for a while because it was part of the Anglo-American group, but it got spun off, oh, I don't know, probably in the sort of uh, 2005 sort of period. Wayne will correct me if I'm wrong, maybe a little bit later. It's dual listed, so it's got a structure similar to Investec, where it's got two classes of stock, MNDs, which is Mondi Limited, and MNPs, which is Mondi PLC. You've got to add the two together to get the market cap. It's listed here as well as in London. And its operations are all over the show, but with a specific focus on wood manufacture and pulp production in emerging markets, but selling into markets, particularly in Europe and around the world. It's a big player in craft paper, corrugated packaging, industrial bags made from the craft paper. And you know what? It's done spectacularly well. It's grown to a market cap of 133 billion rand. Billion with a B. Price to earnings ratio 20, so that's fairly elevated. Dividend yield not too bad, 2.04. So, uh, I mean, it's done really, really yes. well. Sometimes hard to believe how well it's done. Well, well, look, when you look at their history, they were a proper South African company, and they were almost a sappy. Mm. They used to do all the same things, the same range, yep. specifically including a lot of quality paper, you know, high gloss paper. Yep. They decided a while back probably or probably 10 15 years ago now they are going into corrugated packaging and the raw basic packaging inputs mm -hmm. they cut out virtually their whole fine paper side and they concentrated in Europe mm -hmm. and they've actually been phenomenal. And they went successful. and acquired businesses in Eastern Europe, yeah, in Russia, Eastern Turkey, Europe. all yeah. sorts of places like that. So they that. manufacture there and they sell into like Europe. Like old communist era mills Correct. which were badly run and they just improved the production yeah. efficiencies and so on. Correct. And I mean virtually every year they come up with results. Mm. They actually either meet expectations or surpass them. And this is in an economy that's in a recession that hasn't done well for the last five, six, seven years. Yeah. Yet they seem to be able to identify exactly what products to have. You know, it's a very well-managed company. Well, let's look at that share price chart because uh, that is definitely one of the better performers of that scale. And even when you thought perhaps in 2014 that it had run ahead of itself a little bit, mm. uh, it seems to have gotten another substantial leg up. Yeah, mm. look, I mean, obviously when you look at shares, great companies normally do trade at a a premium to the market you would expect them to have a high price earnings ratio of course any company can stumble I mean you never know exactly what the future is going to hold but there's probably less chance of a stumble yeah mm. simply because there's probably less new competition coming into the market probably less new innovation new products you know it's not a it's certainly not a high-tech business yeah so they focus, as you say, on that uh, corrugated packaging. So that's the stuff, for example, that Amazon ships its stuff around Correct. the world in yeah. boxes. And of course, then they also get used in all sorts of purposes where people manufacture finished goods for, say, the retailers. They yeah. put them in these the boxes fact, in order to ship them around. Yeah. So it's hard to say that that's going out of business. That's not a no. necessarily a no. massive growth industry. But if you've got a good market share, you yeah. should be able to you maintain, maintain it. it. And of course, they, as you said, their uh, manufacturing operations are in cheap countries. Yeah. Where where your input costs are low yeah, so you can yeah. compete very effectively and i assume its reputation in london where it is a fairly significant player mm. too would be one of a nice emerging market footprint good management team david yeah. hathorne presents very well so i don't know yeah. what's not to like is the only thing that's worrying you perhaps i'm sensing is that the bit is of the valuation the, yeah, the, look when you look in euro the last i think it was the last quarter they came up i think it was quarterly results or mm. might have been half year doesn't matter Earnings were up 15% in euro terms. Now, a 15% is obviously quite good, yeah. but is it good enough for a 20 price earnings ratio? And that's my only Perhaps question. not in our world, but in theirs it probably is. Yeah, no, theirs probably is, yeah. yeah. And of course, if, if you believe like I do that Europe will eventually respond to all the free money being thrown at it and the euro will eventually strengthen, because being having earnings in euro and uh, being a RAND investor, mm. you know, you've got nowhere for the last year. In fact, I think the RAND is still strengthened against the euro over the last year or so. But of course, should Europe recover, you will get some strength in the euro versus mm. the RAND. Mm. And that will be very beneficial for RAND investors. Right. So it's actually a difficult one to call because mm. it's a sound company. It's really done well. They've, they've shown great resilience in very difficult economic circumstances specifically in europe and essentially this company is europe i mean mm. it's not solely europe but effectively it, it's it's the majority of their businesses are in europe you know you've got to say well probably it probably does justify mm. it but oh after that type of share <laughs> price rise you know i'm cautious i you yeah. know maybe 
But maybe I'm being too cautious, but yes. So I can see you're tortured here. I'm going to go with hot just because I think... No, um, I think I'll go hot as well. Okay, good. I thought, I, off might, the fence. thought I might tip you there. Tip off, off the fence.